Hey, do you want to be the antidote to all the doom and gloom? Join me as I come from my slice of life to help bring more joy into yours. This is the My Slice of Life podcast. Welcome to the My Slice of Life podcast. This season has all been about finding the joy in being prepared. And this week is the penultimate episode of this season. We are looking at getting prepared for the week ahead, whether it's meetings you might have, school uniforms needing done, meal prep, whatever it is. Being prepared for the week ahead can take some of that stress off you and make what is usually a nightmare into something that's manageable and a bit more of a breeze. So let's crack on and get prepared for the week ahead. The first thing I'm going to ask you is, do you usually use a diary or a calendar? Are you one of those types of people? I say that because I am. I definitely am. I have several diaries. Being a homeschooler, I've got a diary for homeschool. I have a diary for my own appointments and things I need to remember, you know, like paying bills and stuff like that. Um, I also have a diary for the podcast and the blog to keep on top of that. I can't remember anything. And if you've heard the previous episode, you will know I'm at a stage of life where my brain is pretty much 75% cotton wool or candy floss, however you want to look at it. Nothing's sticking in there. Ain't nothing going in, nothing's coming out. If I don't write it down, it doesn't get done. That's the stage I'm at. So I use diaries, I use calendars. Have you ever had a calendar and you've had it up all year and you get to the end of the year, you take it down and you think, I didn't write one thing in there. I didn't score one thing off. I didn't note anything on it. I write a lot on the calendar. Not just for me. I've actually had to refer back to them in the past. You know, when did you start this or when did that happen? And I've had them on the calendar. That's more for everybody to see. The diaries are just for me. So I would urge you, if you are not somebody who uses a diary and and a calendar, I would urge you to get using them. Now, whether you like the paper versions like I do, or you prefer a more techie style, whatever suits you, but use them. Put your appointments in it. They are a fantastic organising tool, so use it. And here's a wee tip that I got. When I worked in a hospital, there was a girl who I worked with and she opened her diary and I was like, my God, you're busy. And she says, no, well, she says, yes, I'm busy. She says, but all her phone calls were noted in there. If she had a report she had to do, that was put in as well. So anything important, anything that you need to remember that you have to do, note it in your diary. That is the first step to having a well-organised week. At least that way you know what you're doing when and then you can prepare for it and make everything run just that little bit more smoothly. So then I'm going to move on and say if you have kids and they're at school or you homeschool, are you prepared for the coming week? Do you have uniforms to get ready? Do you have any homework or projects that are to be handed in? If you're homeschooling like we are, have you worked out the curriculum for the coming week? At least the coming week. I like to be a few weeks ahead, but if you're a homeschooler, you know, same as me, if you can plan things, but it doesn't always work that way. And I'm not I'm not the type of person who buys the, the curriculum for the year. Have you seen how expensive they are? Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. So no, I'm not doing that. I make the curriculum depending on, basically depending on what our son wants to learn about. And sometimes, and you'll know if you do this, you'll do something and it leads on to another topic and that leads on to another topic. And I like that. So that's how we do it. But certainly I'll be at least a week. I prefer to have a month done in the diary, if I'm honest. I can tweak it, but I do prefer to have a kind of general structure for the coming month put in the diary. Again, diary. Um, but that's homeschool. But if you if your kids are at school, have you got lunches prepared? Do they need you know PE kit on a Tuesday? Is that ready? That kind of thing. So have a think and get yourself organised for the school week ahead as well. Now, if you are going to work or your spouse doesn't matter, but if there are um, important meetings coming up in the the week ahead at work. 
get prepared for them. Now, you'll probably think, yeah, okay, two o'clock on Wednesday, I'll be there. But do a little bit more than that. Are there any facts or figures that you need to know about and get organised before you go? Do you have any new ideas that you can offer? Do you have questions for the boss? Don't let them off, but you know, without asking them anything. But don't wait until you're in the room to get it sorted. A little bit of thought. And don't be thinking, you know, oh, it's going to take up my whole weekend. No, just have a look, have a think. What am I doing? What do I need to prepare for? And even just 10 minutes can make a huge difference to what happens that week. Now, similarly, I don't know if I even said that right. I usually struggle with that word. But if you have an appointment or a couple of appointments in the week ahead, same sort of thing. Get organised for them. If you have, even if it's a medical appointment, for example, be prepared for that. Think of what questions you need answers to. Take a notepad with you. Have your questions written down. Write down the answers. If you can't do it, get whoever you're talking to to give you a note of what they're saying so it's all covered. Don't go in that room. Listen to them nod. Come out and think, I should have asked them this, that and the other and I can't remember what they said anyway. We don't want that because that's stressful. Get organised, get your questions ready, get some way where you can have their feedback so you can remember it. That can take a lot of stress off you as well because people get nervous before appointments and a lot of the nervousness is the unknown. So by getting prepared for it, we can be a little bit calmer and a little less stressed about it in the first place. And that's a good way to start the appointment. Right, the next topic I want to put to you, I have discussed before and it's housework or homemaking, whatever it is that you want to call it. I'm going to ask you a question and if you've heard my previous episode on this, your answer better be yes. Do you have a plan of some sort for the housework? Think, do you want a whole day, once a week? Is that how you tackle it? Do you tackle a room a day? This kind of thing. And the reason I'm asking this is there's no point saying, right, I'm going to catch up with all the washing on Thursday if you don't have the washing powder in. So that way, if you think what day you're going to do what, you can be more organised and more prepared and in these chores don't feel so much like a chore because you've already done some of the prep beforehand. Even better, can you delegate some of it? Could you say to somebody, look, I've got a really busy day on Tuesday, could you change the bed before I get back? Put the stuff in the basket, I'm going to wash it on Thursday because you know you're going to do that and you'll have the washing powder ready. But get somebody to help you with bits and pieces. Maybe you've got a lot of appointments up this week. So maybe it'll be, okay guys, you know, 10 minutes at night after dinner, can everybody chip in and just tidy up the rooms so when I come to clean it, it's not so much for me to take on. Something like that. But the point is just to have a think about it before you get there. A little bit of preparation, hopefully a little bit of help. And we're going to make the cleaning for the week less stressful and maybe, maybe a bit more enjoyable. If you've listened to the previous episode, you will know the tips and tricks that I've given you to make the housework a little more enjoyable because we can do that. Now, moving on from that... Again, I have covered this topic before, but it does come under the umbrella of being prepared for the week. The meals you're going to have. Breakfasts, I think, quite often take care of themselves. If you're a cereal or a toast house, you know, people just help themselves. Not everybody is. I get that. In some houses, it's a full-on cooked affair. That doesn't happen here. We're not huge eaters in the morning, so that doesn't happen. And this is a topic that was covered in a previous episode, so I would encourage you to go back to that. But, yes, I hope you're paying attention to that. But I am going to suggest you have a think about the meals that you intend to have for the week. Again, by checking what you already have, take that into account. Batch cook as much as possible. Like If you have a weekend free and you're making something nice, and try and at least double that. And then you've got a meal ready for later in the week. Things like that. It depends how you do your cooking. I know some people actually do a lot of cooking at the weekend. That's great. Double it up or, you know, make three times as much. So then your meals are there for you. Check what's in the cupboards. Check what's in the freezer. Have some sort of a plan and take some of that stress out of mealtimes. There's nothing worse and I've done it. Having a really busy day at work. You come home. You don't know what you're doing. You make bad choices or you pick something up on the way home, not 
now and again, fine, but not every night. So we're looking to get organised and take some of the stress out of this. Let's face it, we're all about making things easier on ourselves. Isn't that the point? So by getting more organised with the meals you're going to have, hopefully this will just be another little tool in your toolbox that's going to help you have a better week. Now, the last thing I'm going to bring up here is something that actually doesn't affect us very much, if I'm honest, and it's visitors or guests. Um, It's not that we are really antisocial, although we kind of are, I suppose, but we just don't get many visitors or guests. It doesn't happen, which is good for us because our dog couldn't handle it for a start. But maybe you have somebody coming to stay with you for a few days, or maybe you've just got somebody coming for dinner. Either way, think what they are going to need so they're going to feel welcome and comfortable when they stay with you. Will they need towels, for example? Do you have to make up the spare bedroom? If somebody's coming for dinner, do you know exactly what you're making? Do you know exactly what you need to buy? Do you have it all organised when they're going to arrive? What time you need to start cooking? All these little things. If somebody's staying with you for a few days, do you have days arranged to go places? Have you organised little sightseeing trips? That kind of thing. A little bit of planning before they come and visit you. And not only will you look like a fantastic host, but they'll be like, this is great. I don't have to make any decisions. I don't have to ask for anything. You've done a fantastic job. And hopefully when you go and visit them, they'll do the same for you. So this week is really all about putting in a little thought, a little bit of thought before the week starts to help the rest of the week be a breeze, be enjoyable, less stressful. And then that gives you time to do other things. You're not panicking. You're not going about in a mad dash. You're organised. You're prepared. You're ready for anything. And that's what we want, isn't it? That'll make things easier all round. So there you have it, guys. I hope you have got something out of this week's episode. Um, Like I say, it is the second last one for this season. Next week is the last one. At the moment I'm doing 10 episodes for a season and then I've been putting up a little bonus episode. I'm going to try and keep that going for as long as I can. Don't forget to look at the links below. There is a PDF that does go with season 2 and anybody who hops along to the Buy Me A Coffee or the Patreon and uh, chips in there, you will get sent a copy of this PDF. And it's just really, it's all the notes from the entire season 2, all the episodes all the tips and little things that I've discussed, everything's there for you. If you don't fancy that, don't forget to hop along to the blog. There's something put up every day, Monday to Friday, at the moment. I'm going to try and keep that up as long as I can as well. But until next time, you take care of yourself.